finest professional wrestling from the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic region, Capital Wrestling. We're going to go out there and we're going to prove to the world, prove to Capital Wrestling, that we are the best tag team in the world, right? But of course that's right, because Capital Wrestling, get ready for a sex experience like no other. Because on Saturday night, June 3rd, I, the Colossal Mike Law, am calling dibs on the main event. And there will be nobody, and I mean nobody, left to stop me. Alright. Thanks, kid. Pacifico letting him know. Unfortunately, he can't. Uh, a leg injury. Trying to cheer Ryan on, inspire him. Well, uh, an interesting turn of events here. Uh, Vinny Pacifico issuing a challenge on behalf of his tag team partner, really good Ryan Zane. Uh, a very odd little thing here, but uh, I guess he's issuing an open challenge, and let's see if anybody in the back at the uh, 2K dub. Wait a minute here. Oh, my god. And look who it is. Ken Dixon. Capital Wrestling returns to Cathedral Hall Saturday night, June 3rd, with an action-packed eight-match card that you don't want to miss being taped for Capital Wrestling Television. Already signed to debut, Maxwell, Jacob Feinstein, Anthony Gangone, as well as the returning Pain Train, Preston Quinn, the colossal Mike Law, the New York Wrecking Crew, and more. For tickets and more information, go to Facebook.com slash Capital Wrestling. Capital Wrestling, old school wrestling for the modern fan. This week, Capital Wrestling is brought to you by Sickening Pictures in association with Turnstile Films in 1984 production presents Powerbomb. Powerbomb is the story of an independent wrestler on the verge of breaking into the big time, but he's contemplating leaving it all behind to spend more time with his family. When our wrestler's biggest fan hears the news, he decides to take matters into his own hands to ensure that his champion gets to the top by any means necessary. For more information, visit sickeningpictures.com slash IGG. And the crowd uh, already got a feeling that Ken Dixon is... And uh, this match underway here. Another episode of impromptu matches, two in a row here. Uh, this is not on the rundown sheet. This is a little bit confusing, uh, hence no entrance music. Uh, you know, again, this was an open challenge. Oh, and look at the sportsmanship, and I use the term loosely, by Ken Dixon. Well, that's not his responsibility to be fair here. I mean, again, this is an open challenge. You take what you get, and right now he's just taking it to really good Ryan Zane. Of course, Dixon is one of the toughest and most sought after free agents in pro wrestling, and he is here at the Capitol. Yeah. 
in the corner. Irish whip. Strong Irish whip. Oh, my goodness. And really good Ryan Zane. Looking worse for wear here. Uh, the irony that uh, Ryan Zane was booked for a match uh, initially, but then unfortunately assumed he wasn't wrestling, so he's not in his gear. Uh, and now he's got to suffer here with, you know. Of course, Vinny Pacifico blew out his knee last week training for this tag team match that should have taken place tonight. But in its steed, we still get great action here in the Capitol with Ken Dixon versus really good Ryan Zane. And a nice pop-up, a nice turn of events for Ryan Zane. Strong right hand in the corner, trying to fight back. Vinny Pacifico cheering on his tag team partner, even though he kind of put him in this position, oddly enough. Building a head of steam here. But the raw power of Dixon. Cover, one, two. And a kick out. It's going to take a bit more than that to take out really good Ryan Zane. And laying the boots, Ken Dixon just hitting him hard. It's right in the lower lumbar region. Working him over. Muay Thai clench up over the shoulder and down. Another quick pin, one, two. Ken Dixon trying to keep Zane on his toes with quick pins, trying to finish this early. Dropping the elbow. Just hoping there's no uh, no traffic on the turnpike. I'm, yeah, I'm exactly. Sure. Oh, wow, Dixon. Uh, not a fan favorite, and uh, with that attitude, probably not going to be. But hey, who needs the fans? Let's be honest. Am I right, Steven? We all need the fans. It's why we're here to supply great professional wrestling. Uh, the fans are here because these guys put on matches, so who needs who? But aside from that, Ken Dixon, not exactly a lovable guy, looking for a fight. That's why he showed up here ready to work. Of course, Zane in his street clothes, but still never one to turn down a fight. Exchanging blows, Irish whip, reverse. Up and over, Sunset Flip trying for the pin. And Dixon with a stomp. Telegraphed there. Chastising Zane for even attempting such a move. Ken Dixon is just a guy who loves a fight. I mean, that's what this is about. He just loves tearing into people. And tearing into people is what he is doing right now. Of course, Ken Dixon trained in Maryland at MCW and has several managers drawing up contracts to sign him. This man is sought after, and we are lucky enough to have him here. Yeah, I mean, you know, one of the toughest guys, one of the toughest guys in professional wrestling, for sure. Uh, and then laying into really Ryan Zane, uh, offended that I guess he had an open challenge, uh, you know. Again, not his fault. Really kind of laid out by Vinny Pacifico, his tag team partner. And now Ryan Zane's got to take the beating for that. See, when you have a tag team partner and you're as close as they are, Pacifico must have believed so much in the ability of his tag team partner, Ryan Zane here, that he put him in this match. Well, you know, it's, it's just it's the nature of the beast. All these guys are gunning for something. You know, they, they're gunning for the next level and they have to make an impression. Again, new company. Oh, and a roll up. Oh, so close. Two. This is a new company that's just started up. So what happens is you open up a new company and people are eager to get that top spot. This is borderlining not on a, a wrestling match, but an absolute molly whopping here. Well, you got to wonder at some point if the referee is going to put a stoppage to this. Again, this kid's in street clothes. He's not even in his gear. Wasn't uh, expecting this match. Did not expect it. Uh, it's his own fault for taking it. I mean, he didn't have to take it. But we're wondering. Dixon jawing with Pacifico on the outside as he perched upon the second rope, waiting. Uh, and he's going up top even further, waiting for really good Ryan Zane. Stalking his prey up and over again to the back. It has been all Dixon all day long here in this matchup. 
And going for the clothesline. Zane gets out of the way and it gives a clothesline of his own. Another one. And going maybe for a third. Flying forearm. Goes Looking for the, for the pin here. Just a two count as Pacifico on the outside trying to get the crowd behind Zane. Well, that's the least he could do. The, the kid put Ryan Zane in this position. When you're a professional athlete like they are, you have to be ready to fight at any moment in time. And it seems like really good Ryan Zane is ready to fight. Mm. Well, I mean, he's certainly not giving in. That's for sure. He took on the open challenge. He didn't have to. Some people might consider that stupid, but going to the top. He's found the energy to go up top. Oh, wow, wow, and wow. And perhaps a mistake as Ken Dixon knocks him off that vertical base and gives him a little hello from the turnbuckle. Looking for a oh, neck breaker. Oh. oh, brutal neck breaker from the middle rope by Dixon. Setting him up. Ken Dixon with high impact here. One, two, three. And that's all she wrote. Wow. Ken Dixon victorious with ease here over really good Ryan Zane. Answering the open challenge. Vinny Pacifico, of course, on the outside. Trying to, uh, checking on Zane. Ken Dixon. Not showing any uh, favoritism towards Ken Vinny Dixon. Pacifico. Hello, everyone, and welcome to A View from the Capitol. We are officially less than one month away from Capitol Wrestling's return to Jersey City and Cathedral Hall on Saturday night, June 3rd. Already signed for this event will be the return of the Concrete Rose, Sonny Kiss, to his hometown as he takes on the man who just decimated Ryan Zane, Ken Dixon. We'll have comments in the coming weeks from both of these competitors, but one thing we do know is that when you get the athleticism of Sonny Kiss and the violence of Ken Dixon, it'll be an encounter that you do not want to miss. Another marquee match on June 3rd at Cathedral Hall is the first defense of the Capital Wrestling Tag Team Championships as the team of beautiful Bobby Shields and sizzling Stan Styles, Luxury Muscles Incorporated will be in action. Now, with comments are the Capital Wrestling Tag Team Champions and their manager, the Femivist, Portia Vaughn. Let's go, boys. 
Well, it seems that two of the loudest mouths in Capital Wrestling have set the stage to let their two teams battle it out. But who, in fact, will be the number one contenders for the Capital Wrestling Tag Team titles on June 3rd at Cathedral Hall? Well, next week on Capital Wrestling, we can confirm that Capital Wrestling co-founder Marcus Dowling will make an announcement after meeting with Capital Wrestling senior official Mike Keener this week to decide who will it be. And Marcus Dowling, once again, will be on Capital Wrestling Television next week to make the official announcement for June 3rd. Last week on Capital Wrestling, we heard from the intergender world champion of the known universe, the colossal Mike Law, and his opponent for June 3rd, the pain train, Preston Quinn. These two will battle it out in the main event of our next event in a battle of the villains. There, however, is another match on the card that has the pain train's attention, and that is the battle between the two newest members of the Capital Wrestling roster, Maxwell Jacob Friedman and the rogue Anthony Gangone. Earlier this week, our Twitter feed announced that a major change would be occurring for our June 3rd card. And now, with that announcement, is the pain train Preston Quinn? And the pain train Preston Quinn is always bringing the top of the line. That sweet tea is on point. For the people in Jersey, you wouldn't know nothing about that because you're too stupid to know how to make sweet tea. What do you expect when people can't even pump their own gas? So what I wanted to talk about is Maxwell Jacob Feinstein. You're running your mouth talking about veterans holding you down. Son, I don't care what side of the fence you're on. You won't be coming to New Jersey. You won't be coming to Jersey City. I've already put in the call, and I'm announcing it before Mike Kenner can. Feinstein won't be there because the pain train will rip his arm off and feed him with it, and he comes within 200 feet of that building. That brings me to my point. Anthony Gangoni, don't think I didn't see what you did to the NRA's buddy, Paul James. Well, I'm bringing somebody to as much of a son to me as possible. The Bo Show, Bo Crockett. Hey, hey, pay attention to your food over there, buddy. Got that? I'm cutting a promo. Don't worry about it. Hey, hey, you see that? That's as much as your house. Now, that cost as much as your house. Now, turn around and stuff it. Anthony again, Gurney, the Bo Show, Bo Crockett is going to take you and drop you, and we'll just see if you can run that big mile when you've got a broken jaw. And now, both men have been made aware of this situation, and with comments, the rogue Anthony Gangone. You get a little bit of power, and now you think you can throw your weight around. You think that you can do whatever the hell you want. Including taking my match away from me that I had with MJF. And I was really looking forward to humbling down MJF. But now I have a match against Bo Crockett. And I am looking forward to formally introducing myself to Crockett and you. My name is the rogue Anthony Gangone. And I say and do whatever the hell I want. I don't live in a box and I don't live by other people's rules. Which could cause a problem for someone like you. Mr. Quinn. So June 3rd, Cathedral Hall, Jersey City, Capital Wrestling. Old school meets a little bit of the new school. Be there. Strong words from Gangone, and one has to wonder, with no comment from NJF as we tried to contact his office earlier this week, stating that he is unavailable due to the blatant disrespect by Preston Quinn. We do know the Rogue looks to go to war with the prodigal son of the South, Bo Crockett, on June 3rd in Jersey City. 
Next week on Capital Wrestling, we will preview the upcoming three-way dance between the pain train Preston Quinn, Leon St. Giovanni, and the champion of the 1% Logan Easton LaRue, as well as comments from Jeff Cannonball as he prepares for his rematch against the hybrid athlete, John Kerman. For Harry Turjani and Stephen James and all the rest of us here at Capital Wrestling, so long from the Garden State. Capital Wrestling returns to Cathedral Hall Saturday night, June 3rd, with an action-packed eight-match card that you don't want to miss being taped for Capital Wrestling Television. Signed already for our return to Cathedral Hall. It is the Beard versus the Booty as Ken Dixon looks to add Sunny Kiss to his history of violence. Also in action, Anthony Gando makes his Capital Wrestling debut as he takes on the National Wrestling Alliance's prodigal son, Bo Crockett. In Tag Team Championship action, the team of Sizzling Stan Styles and beautiful Bobby Shields, Luxury Muscles Incorporated, defend their tag team titles against Smiley and Matt Sells, Sex Crazed. The Danger Family makes their Capital Wrestling debut as Timmy Danger and a mystery partner take on the Perfect Strangers. As well as the returning Pain Train, Preston Quinn, the Colossal Mike Law, the New York Wrecking Crew, and more. For tickets and more information, go to Facebook.com slash Capital Wrestling. Capital Wrestling, old school wrestling for the modern fans.